Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanics.com and today we're talking spark plugs. All right, so like I said, today we're talking spark plugs. Now spark plugs are an incredibly common term in the engine world, really the gasoline engine world anyway, but I wanna go a little bit deeper and explain what a spark plug is, how it works, and how to check spark plugs. This is also gonna be kind of a sister video to the video I've done on how to replace spark plugs. Let's go ahead and start off by talking about the parts of a spark plug. So this is the terminal nut right here. Then we move down to the corrugations on the ceramic. This is the top insulator piece right here. This is the hexagon piece. This is the piece where you put a socket to install and remove the spark plug. We have the metal shell. We have the gasket right here. This is an old spark plug, so the gasket's been crushed. We have the threaded piece right here. Moving to the front, this is the nose of the insulator. This tiny, tiny, tiny piece right here is the center electrode, and then these are the ground electrodes. Now, this insulator piece actually runs from right here all the way down roughly to the ceiling ring. Your spark plugs are part of your ignition system, and it's basically two electrodes. Voltage is sent down, that voltage jumps the gap, creates a spark, kind of like when you rub your feet on the carpet and then go to touch a doorknob, you can see that spark. That's basically what happens with a spark plug. That spark will ignite the air fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber, cause a big explosion, and then that starts the power stroke of your engine. All right, let's go over some of the definitions from a spark plug. Spark plugs are determined by their size. The size of a spark plug is determined by the diameter of the threads right here. If we try to install the wrong size spark plug, we can cause anything from the spark plug not being able to be torqued down, to damage to the cylinder head in the form of either cross-threading or simply trying to jam a spark plug in a hole where it won't fit. Then we have the spark plug reach. The reach is going to be the length of the threads. Reach is also how far into the cylinder head the spark plug goes. You can see the discoloration difference in these threads. So it's really nice and clean here and then it gets sort of darker, darker, darker before it gets down to the electrode portion of it. So this is gonna be the portion that sticks out into the cylinder head. So if we don't have the right amount of reach, if we're not far in the cylinder enough, we're not gonna get a good combustion. If it's too far into the cylinder, we can cause anything from pre-ignition, really hard spark plugs to remove, or worst case, the piston hitting it or even the valve hitting the end of the spark plug. Next, we have the heat range on the spark plug. The heat range is listed right on the side. And the heat range is determined from the tip of the insulator right here to the ceiling ring. A longer distance from the ceiling ring to the tip of the insulator means a hotter plug. A shorter distance means a colder plug. When we install spark plugs that are too hot, we run the risk of pre-ignition. When we install a spark plug with too cold of a reading, we can actually foul the spark plug out really fast due to deposits building up on the spark plug. And finally, we have spark plug gap. The gap of a spark plug is the distance between the center electrode and the ground electrode. If we have a big spark plug gap, then it's actually more spark comes in contact with the air fuel mixture. The problem with that is that also requires more voltage to be sent from the ignition coil in order to make that spark. A smaller gap, so if the distance between the center and the ground is shorter, even though it'll take less voltage, we'll probably end up with a weaker spark. And with a weaker spark, we'll get a less complete burn of our air fuel mixture. Now, gapping spark plugs is a really common thing, and there's a bunch of different kind of tools that you can use to gap. You can use this really inexpensive medallion piece that has numbers on it, and what we do with this one, we'll put this between the center and the ground electrode and roll it around until we achieve the number that we're looking for depending on manufacturer recommendation. If we need to open the gap, we'll simply put this portion of it on the electrode and bend it back to open it. And then if we need to shorten the gap on these, really what a lot of people do is they'll simply take it and they'll tap it back down until we're able to roll it around and meet whatever number that we need. That's one way. We also have this tool right here, which is actually the one I prefer and this works very similar. It's just a little bit easier to use. This is what we'll do. We'll put it right between here. We'll measure the gap, and then we'll use this end when we need to open the gap, 
we can even bend it back or bend it forward. This is a pretty worn out, beat up spark plug. It actually bent the tool a little bit until we reach our desired amount. There's also a lot of people that really do prefer just to use plain old feeler gauges. What we would do with these is we would simply find the one that we need. They're all numbered and then just check the gaff that way. A couple of things you wanna make sure you don't do. Don't jam a screwdriver in here and bend the gap open. That'll damage the spark plug. Don't take pliers and open it up. Basically don't do anything that can cause any kind of damage to the ground, the center electrode, or the insulator. Now, as far as tools go, we talked about the gapping tools a little bit. There's gonna be other tools that we're gonna need. The tools that are required are really gonna depend on the style of ignition system we have. Do we have spark plug wires like my VR6s? Do we have coil on plug like the other two cars that we drive? Or do we have a coil near plug, which isn't very common. It's mostly you either have spark plug wires or you have a coil on plug, but the tools that we're gonna need are pretty much the same. First, we're gonna either need to remove the spark plug wire or the ignition coil. If we're removing spark plug wires, then you can use a pair of pliers like this. This will allow you to grab the boot and twist and work the spark plug wire off. If we're doing something with coil on plug, maybe just a screwdriver will work and just sort of pry the coil off. That's generally what I do on most of our cars. Now there are some special tools that you can use to remove those coils. Some of them need, really do need them. Some of the uh, 24 valve VR6s really could use them, but for the most part, simply using a screwdriver will work just fine. And if you're really trick on an older VR6, you might have this guy right here, which lived on your hood prop. That hooked the spark plug wire, allowed you to twist it and pull the wire out. This one is super worn out, so it actually doesn't work anymore. Next, we're gonna need to remove the spark plug from the cylinder. For that, we are going to need a spark plug socket. Now, a spark plug socket is a little bit different than a normal, say, 16 millimeter socket like this one. Inside, there'll be a way to retain the spark plug. Now, this one has little metal tabs, so when I put the spark plug in, it doesn't fall out. There's also some that have a rubber insert inside of here. There's also some that are just simply tapered inside the socket. I own all three kinds and all three of them work really well. Now we may also need an extension to put our socket on just to give us that extended reach. Obviously a ratchet of some sort that puts our spark plug removal tool kit together. Something to keep in mind is we probably don't want to do this on a hot engine. I know there are some exceptions, and I've done a ton of spark plugs on hot engines with aluminum cylinder heads, but we do run a little bit more risk on a hot engine than we do on a cold engine of maybe damaging threads. That's the official warning, the official like SAE thing, don't do it on a hot cylinder head, but I can tell you I've done tons of them and never had a problem, knock on wood. I also know that there are some like Fords that are really terrible about spark plugs that all the guys do with hot cylinder heads. But again, the official is do it with a cold cylinder head. Now, going back together, I always start every single spark plug by hand. I'll jam the spark plug into the spark plug socket and then start it by hand, and I'll run it the rest of the way in with the ratchet. And of course, anytime I install a new spark plug, you gotta hit it with the torque wrench. It's, you know, I'm definitely not a torque Nazi, as my good buddy Eric might say. Um, but guys, with spark plugs, I've seen too many messed up due to improper torque, not enough, too much. Go ahead, put a torque wrench on it, get them torqued down to whatever the manufacturer spec is. A lot of Volkswagens are 30 Newton meters. Some Volkswagens are 25 Newton meters. It really depends on the engine you have. You know, uh, every brand has their own torque spec for things, but spark plugs are one that always, 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 when you're installing new spark plugs, put a torque wrench on it. You know, one last thing, I actually, like I said, this is sort of a sister video to the how to do spark plugs on your car. So what I did was I bought the spark plugs that the dealership called for, and they're stupid expensive. They're like $11 a piece or $9 a piece or something crazy. Well, I wanted to see what that compared to. So I went to two parts stores to see what kind of spark plugs they recommend. All right, so these are the three spark plugs that I got. This is the one from the dealership. This is the cheapest one. I actually went to the two parts stores and asked for the two cheapest ones they had. But at the part store, the last part store that I went to, there was over 16 different options for spark plugs just for my GTI VR6. Let's start off with the cheap one. This one came in at $1.99. This is a, simply a copper core spark plug, just basically about as generic of a spark plug as you can get. Let's go ahead and open up the factory one though so we can compare that to what the most expensive one is. Notice this has a cardboard retainer on it. 
That's because Volkswagen spark plugs come pre-gapped. In addition to that, this is a dual ground electrode spark plug where this one is just a single ground electrode. So $1.99, 9, 10, 11, 12, something dollars. And then this one came in right about four bucks. This is a platinum spark plug. It has a single electrode, but if you look really close, you can see that the electrodes are just a little bit different. This one has a platinum tip on the end of it. We also noticed that the reach of the spark plugs is almost the same between the two auto lights and pretty much the same from the factory one as well. So I find it interesting that, you know, one auto parts store, there was 16, 17 some odd different selections four spark plugs, but the one that I got and was told would work doesn't match the style of the factory one. I've seen a lot of Autolite spark plugs in Volkswagens, nothing against Autolite, but I've seen a lot of Autolite spark plugs really make Volkswagen engines unhappy. So that's what we have now. Again, this is a new one. This is what came out of the GTI, 138,000 miles, unknown replacement of last replacement of spark plug. You can see the difference. The old one is pretty crudded up as you might expect, a lot of deposits on it. Definitely time for a new spark plug. This one came out of the cabbie. Nothing really too much to worry about. Really what you wanna be looking for is more buildup like this, where you got deposits, maybe a little bit of uneven wear on the ground electrode side. All right, so there you have it. I hope you learned a little bit more about spark plugs that maybe you didn't know, or maybe this was a bit of a refresher course on spark plugs. I know it was a little bit for me, which is always fun to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post it in the comment section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at homeboommechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, and one final note, a lot of what we talked about today is based on a factory vehicle. If you have a modified vehicle, then you know a lot of what we talked about kind of goes out the window. If you have a factory vehicle, I recommend following what the manufacturer recommends for spark plugs and really most everything else. Volkswagen for the My AAA VR6 recommends two different plugs, an NGK and a Bosch. Both of them are great. I'm running the NGKs. I've had really great luck with them, but this is one area you definitely want to follow what the manufacturer recommends.